Hello everyone, my name is Manoj Mulat, founder and CEO of Capricorn Mindframe, a boutique financial advisory firm. Firstly, let me take this opportunity to thank the Cochin Chamber of Commerce and Industry for this wonderful opportunity to be interacting with all of you. We are in very unprecedented times, with COVID impacting our lives in more ways than one. While for some it has had a catastrophic effect, some call it a disruptive phase. In all of this, government has been planning and executing a slew of reforms. Of course, to ensure liquidity and boost consumption and spending, including the 20 lakh crore liquidity package. But with the economy opening up in bits and pieces and with, um, you know, uh, lockdowns one after the other, consumption and spending has been lagging. And that's when the government, uh, uh, you know, really sees that the coffers are completely spent. So that's when the government presses the panic button and goes for a petrol diesel price hike. And what is peculiar about the price hike this time was that it was a one week continuous activity. So at a, as a student of economics, I thought it was important that we analyze this. And when the Cochin Chamber of Commerce and Industry approached me for uh, a small video, I thought it was important that we discuss this. And um, Put across my thoughts about this. So to understand this and to talk in detail about petrol and diesel prices, first we need to understand what is crude oil. So what is crude oil? Crude oil is an unrefined fossil fuel, a petroleum product of course, which is extremely rich in hydrocarbon and uh, uh, you know, organic material that can be refined to produce petrochemicals, gasoline and diesel. Gasoline is further refined to produce petrol. And India's dependence on petrol and diesel, of course, we've been depending on petrol and diesel for at least 47 years now, but the actual dependency started uh, from the year 1984. I mean, the dependency in a larger way started from 1984, uh, where a daily consumption grew from 270 eight barrels per day to what it is 4,800 barrels per day. So now let's understand the, the basic uh, petrol and diesel uh, prices, at least in the case of Delhi, of course, uh, four important metros that we have, but then I think Delhi is a very classic example of uh, abnormal or supernormal uh, petrol and uh, diesel price hikes, of course, Delhi and Mumbai. So in the case of Delhi, though in the last 10 years, the dollar, the, the crude oil prices have actually dropped from $71.88 uh, uh, dollars per barrel to what it is today, uh, $40.65 dollar per barrel, the uh, diesel and petrol uh, prices in Delhi have actually gone up to 80.43 and 80.53 uh, rupees respectively, which is 110 and 66 uh, percent uh, jump and gone are those days when we used to have a 12 and 13 or even a 20 uh, rupee difference between diesel and petrol per liter and in the case of Delhi the diesel prices are at least 10 paise uh, uh, above the petrol prices today same is the case with Mumbai Mumbai in fact the, uh, the uh, petrol prices have actually gone up 66% from uh, 2010, from 52.2 to 87.19. The diesel prices have actually gone up 103%, from 78.83 to 100, and, uh, to sorry, uh, to, uh, from, sorry, from 37.99 to 78.33, as on 1st of July, 2020. Now, let's understand the constituents of petrol and diesel prices. All we know is the final price that we are told. This would be the, you know, the, the per liter petrol of petrol or per liter uh, diesel, uh, per liter price of uh, diesel. But uh, not many of us know the constituents or the, the additional taxes that the, the state government and the union government charge us with so that we get the final uh, uh, per liter rate of petrol or diesel. So let's understand that. 
The petrol and diesel prices comprise of five components. Firstly, of course, the crude oil and crude oil prices come with ocean freight. And then comes the refinery processing, refinery margins, the oil marketing companies margins, which of course the oil marketing companies, as you all know, would be Indian Oil Corporation, Bharat Petroleum and Hindustan Petroleum Corporation. And the additional costs are freight costs and logistics. Then comes the fuel price uh, uh, loaded with excise duty and road says as charged with the central government. The commission that has to be paid for petrol pump dealers. And then comes the VAT. The VAT differs from state to state. The VAT in Delhi is different from what uh, the VAT in Chennai, Bangalore, Hyderabad, all of these. It's, it's a state level activity. So uh, if we have to take the example of Delhi, Delhi charges additional 30% on petrol on the uh, fuel uh, price after all the initial costs that I spoke about. On that 30%, additional VAT is charged on petrol and 30% on diesel and diesel also comes with additional cess. So finally, you know, the initial cost per petrol uh, that we get from uh, basic crude is only 20 rupees per liter in the case of petrol and 20 rupees per liter in the case of uh, diesel. That is what mounts to 80.43 in the case of petrol and 80.53 in the case of uh, diesel. Now let's understand the reasons that lead to a rise and fall in petrol and diesel prices. <clears throat> the first being government reform. Now till 2014, or I would say till September 2014, the diesel prices at least, petrol of course was deregulized, uh, deregulated long ago. Diesel was, uh, the prices of diesel were actually uh, controlled by the government of India. Till September 2014. So when the new government took over in the month of uh, July and then subsequently the government in October decided to deregulate the prices in India, which means the prices were directly linked to the international market rates. So prior to the deregulation, like I told you, diesel prices were regulated by the center, which means uh, after deregulation, all the prices will not have government intervention. So the fluctuation in global crude oil prices will directly impact the retail diesel prices. Subsequently, in uh, June 2017, the government also introduced a daily revision of diesel prices or the dynamic fuel pricing model, according to which the fuel prices were revised daily based on previous day's international crude oil price and currency conversion rates. Of course, India earned the, the, the prestigious position of the third, the only third country after UK and Australia to uh, make this uh, small change as well as linking um, uh, the uh, international oil prices on a daily basis. So that's the only distinction India earned. But then, of course, um, whatever followed after that has actually had um, significant impact on the retail consumer in the country. So this is one of the first reasons why the, uh, there can be a frequent uh, rise and fall because government reform is extremely important. The second one is the lack of a proper tax structure or a GST structure like we have in the case of all other goods and services. Crude or petrol and diesel pricing in the country lacks a uniform tax code. That's a very important reason. So because of this, every state charges us as consumers different taxes. The VAT in Delhi is different from what uh, uh, the Maharashtra government uh, uh, charges its consumers in Maharashtra, Mumbai. Tamil Nadu has a different VAT. So that is precisely why you will see different rates for diesel and petrol across the country. Because it's a state level activity. And the third most important uh, uh, reason I would say is of course, government is actually forced to take uh, decisions concerning price hike in petrol and diesel because of global crisis. Now, when does 
uh, when, you, when do you actually know that there is a global crisis? When there's a global crisis, you would see uh, a market meltdown, you will see loss of revenue across economies, you will see loss of uh, direct and uh, indirect tax collections, um, uh, huge spends on health, for example, in the case of a uh, uh, corona pandemic. The government is actually forced to spend more money on sustaining and improving the lives of people or getting them out of uh, this condition. Um, and practically life has come to a standstill and there is no revenue. So in, in contingencies like this, the government is forced to increase the prices of petrol and diesel. While there can be many more reasons uh, to the rise and fall of petrol and diesel prices in the country, I think three uh, important reasons are these, in my opinion. And I would I want to keep it precise due to the lack of time as well. Now, how does this impact common man's life? In short, the cost of production of goods, the services offered by different industries, the production of passenger cars, commercial vehicles, manufacturing in the entire country, the entire transportation of goods and services, the, the, the fruits and vegetables that we eat, the groceries, the, the cost of logistics, container cargo, freight, and of course the most important person affected in the entire chain is the end consumer. For him, per liter of petrol and diesel gets extremely expensive. So this of course affects consumption and spending in a big way and in times like these, of course, he is stuck with very little means for liquidity. So this is how uh, the uh, end customer, uh, end consumer in the economy is affected. So while through this video we are not analyzing the rights and wrongs of government decisions to hike petrol and diesel prices, all we know are these are measures that government takes in terms of contingency or in times of contingency rather. However, personally I believe there has to be a balanced approach to raise revenue and that calls for balanced economics. Hope the session uh, uh, has helped you understand the basics of uh, uh, you know, petrol and diesel prices or at least the, the, the core constituents of uh, uh, petrol and diesel um, and uh, what uh, are the factors that lead to um, the uh, rise and fall of petrol prices. Due to lack of time, we have only taken 10 years an example and uh, uh, I'll be extremely happy to take uh, any form of uh, questions or suggestions from you uh, once you watch this video. So please feel free to contact me directly or uh, please uh, contact the Cochin Chamber of Commerce and Industry. I'll be happy to take any suggestions, feedback, um, and uh, looking forward to hear from all of you. Thank you so much once again, uh, Cochin Chamber of Commerce and Industry for this wonderful opportunity. Mm -hmm.